Hi everyone. Today we continue in Exodus 4 with Moses' excuses to God. But Moses said to Yahweh, My Lord, I've never been able to speak well, not yesterday or the day before, and certainly not now since you've been talking to your servant. I have a slow mouth and a thick tongue. Then Yahweh said to him, Who gives people the ability to speak? Who's responsible for making them unable to speak or hard of hearing, sighted or blind? Isn't it I, Yahweh? Now go, I'll help you speak, and I'll teach you what you should say. But Moses said, Please, my Lord, just send someone else. Then Yahweh got angry at Moses and said, What about your brother, Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak very well. He's on his way to meet you now, and he's looking forward to seeing you. Speak to him and tell him what he's supposed to say. I'll help both of you speak, and I'll teach both of you what to do. Aaron will speak for you to the people. He'll be a spokesman for you, and you will be like God for him. Take this staff with you, too, so you can do the signs. So we've already had some excuses from Moses asking, well, who am I? And asking God, oh, who are you? And then saying, what if people don't believe me? And God, you know, gave him a way to, to do miracles and signs. And now we see him saying, well, you know, I'm not a very good speaker. And finally just say, God, just send someone else. Um, and it's easy to get down on Moses, but would you want this job? Right? You have to go speak to the king of Egypt and ask him to let his slaves go. Uh, Moses is smart enough to know this is not going to go well. And, you know, throughout scripture, we see this as a constant theme, right? Nobody should want to be a prophet. If you think being a prophet is going to be fun or easy, then you haven't really understood the job description. And that makes us wonder, okay, well, then why does God do this? Uh, in this case, why does God choose Moses? Uh, someone who's just full of so many complaints and excuses. Um, is God just doesn't really care? Is God going to force him to do it? against Moses' will, because God has predetermined this what is what's going to happen. I think it's something deeper than that, uh, that God is not just bullying him into this. Instead, what we're seeing here is that God doesn't give up on us, right? God created all of us to do something. God has given all of us a calling, and God is not going to back off on that. Uh, God wants to work through humanity. It seems crazy. It feels like God would be better off just doing all these things without us, but God's not going to give up on that destiny for us. So what has God called you to do? What is your calling? I've heard it said that your calling is where your passion and the deep need of the world meet. So what is that? Do you know? Do you kind of know, but you don't want to do it? Right? What excuses are you trying to give today? As you think about those, think about how God might respond to those excuses. Like I said, if God has called you to do it, God is going to enable you to do it. So let's stop making excuses and let's get to work.